The rotator cuffs are a group of four muscles that we use to stabilize the glenohumeral joint, so the shoulder joint, and they, they can also assist the glenohumeral joint working with the shoulder girdle and increasing the stability in the general effectiveness and efficiency of movements in the upper body. When we're looking at the rotator cuff muscles, it's useful to break them into three groups um, to begin with while we're learning. So one group is called the, is two muscles called the teres minor and the infraspinatus. Now these muscles are generally, well, they are on the back of your scapula and they would originate off the back of your scapula and insert onto the lateral aspect of your humerus. So when these muscles contract, they're going to pull my uh, humerus from this position into that position. So that would be the lateral rotation. So those two muscles, your teres minor and your infraspinatus, are generally known as your lateral rotators. They will pull your arm from this position into that position. Now, once you're in that position, you then need to be able to have a muscle that will pull you back into this position, so a medial rotation. That muscle is called your subscapularis. So your subscapularis means that it's underneath your scapula. So that muscle is actually on the front of our scapula and would connect onto the medial aspect of our humerus. So it would then be pulling us from this position into medial rotation into there. So you've got two on the back that are lateral rotators and one on the front that is a medial rotator. The fourth muscle is your supraspinatus. Your supraspinatus means above the spine. So it's above the spine of the scapula. So up top, almost near where your upper traps are, there is a muscle that goes along the groove of the scapula and inserts onto the lateral aspect of your greater tubercle, so top part of your humerus. And that muscle initiates the first few degrees of abduction as well as flexion. So if you've ever damaged that muscle, which is very common to damage your supraspinatus, you typically will feel discomfort or pain during the initial movement that way or the initial movement in front. But once you've got past that initial movement, other muscles then take over and you don't feel the pain as much. Um, but together, these muscles can also work quite um, in a complex manner. So imagine you have to elevate your arm to this position and you then start to rotate. So by doing this, we have to raise it into abduction, hold it statically in quite a stressed position, um, but we are then laterally rotating. So if you think, if I was to do this position down here, we are rotating from this position to there, that would be lateral rotation, but I'm now doing it while my arm is elevated and paused. So that is now starting to stress my supraspinatus, but I'm also having to use my teres minor and my infraspinatus to go through lateral rotation. And that can be very useful then as it's very um, functional in terms of whether overhead pressing, picking things up and putting them above your head, um, other sporting activities, and it creates that type of instability and control, which we are trying to train those muscles for so we're less likely um, to develop an injury or perform exercises ineffectively.